what improvements do you think we'll see in Neuralink in the coming, let's say, let's get crazy, coming years? I mean, in years, it's going to be gigantic um, because we'll increase the number of electrodes dramatically. Um, we'll improve the signal processing. So, you know, we, with, with, uh, even with only roughly, I don't know, 10, 15% of the electrodes working with, uh, with Nolan, with our first patient, we were able to get to achieve a bits per second. That's twice the world record. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll, we'll start, we'll start like vastly exceeding the world record by orders of magnitude in the years to come. So it's like getting to, I don't know, hundred bits per second, thousand, you know, maybe, maybe if you like five years from now, we might be at a megabit, like faster than any human could possibly communicate uh, by typing or speaking. Yeah, that BPS is an interesting metric to measure. There might be a big leap in the experience once you reach a certain level of BPS. Yeah. Like entire new ways of interacting with the computer might be unlocked. And with humans. With other humans. Provided they have <laughs> they want a neural link too. Right. Do you Otherwise they won't be able to absorb the signals fast enough. Do you think they'll improve the quality of intellectual discourse? Well, I think you can you could think of it, you know, if if you were to slow down communication, how how do you feel about that? You know, if you'd only talk at let's say one tenth of normal speed, you'd be like, Wow, that's agonizingly slow. Yeah. Uh so now imagine you could speak at communicate clearly um at ten or a hundred or a thousand times faster than normal. Listen, uh I'm pretty sure Nobody in their right mind listens to me at 1x. They listen at 2x. <laughs> so I can, I, can, I can only imagine what 10x would ex feel like, or I could actually understand it. I usually default to 1.5x. Um, you can do 2x, but I, well, actually, if I'm trying to go, if, if I'm listening to somebody get to in like sort of 15, 20 minute segments to go to sleep, then I'll do it 1.5x. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm paying attention, I'll do 2x. <laughs> right. Um, but, but actually, if you start, Actually, listen to podcasts or or sort of audiobooks or anything at if you get used to doing it at one point five, then, then one sounds painfully slow. I'm still holding on to one because I'm afraid. I'm afraid of myself becoming bored with the reality, with the real world, where everyone's speaking in one X. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on the person. You can speak very fast. Like we could, we yeah. communicate very quickly, and also if you use a wide range of if your if your vocabulary is, is larger, your uh, bit rate effective bit rate is higher. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah, the effective bit rate. I mean, that is the question: is how much information is actually compressed in the low bit transfer of language. Yeah, if, if you if there's if, if there's a single word that is able to convey something that would normally require um I don't know 10 simple words, then you've you've got a you know maybe a 10x compression on your hands. And that's really like with memes, memes are like data data compression. Um, it, it conveys a whole uh, there's you're simultaneous, simultaneously hit with a wide range of symbols that you can interpret um, and it's you you, you kind of get it um, mm -hmm. faster than if it were words or or a simple picture. And of course, you're referring to memes broadly, like ideas. Yeah, there's, there's a an entire idea structure that is like a an idea template, and then you can add something to that idea template. Uh, but somebody has that pre-existing idea template in their head. Um, so when you add that incremental bit of information, you're conveying uh, much more than if you just you know, said a few words, you, it's everything associated with that meme. You think there'll be emergent leaps of capability as you scale the number of electrodes? Like yeah. there'll be a certain, do you think there'll be like actual number where it just, the, the human experience will be altered? Yes. What do you think that number might be? Whether electrodes or BPS? We of course don't know for sure, but is this 10,000, well, 100,000? Yeah, I mean, certainly if you're anywhere at 10,000, Bits per second. I mean, that's vastly faster than any human could communicate right now. If, if you think of the, the what is the average bits per second of a, of a human, it is less than one bit per second over the course of a day, because there are eighty six thousand four hundred seconds in a day, and you don't com communicate eighty six thousand four hundred um, tokens in a day. Therefore, mm -hmm. your bits per second is less than one, average over twenty four hours. It's quite slow, um, and now, now even if you're communicating very quickly, and and you, you know, you're 
uh, talking to somebody who understands what you're saying, because in order to communicate, you have to, at least to some degree, a model the mind state of the person to whom you're speaking, uh, then take the concept you're trying to convey, compress that into a small number of syllables, speak them, and hope that the other person decompresses them into uh, a conceptual structure that is as close to what you have in your mind as possible. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of signal loss there in that process. Yeah, very lossy compression and decompression. And, and a lot of the uh, a lot of what your neurons are doing is distilling the concepts down to a small number of symbols, of, of, of say syllables that I'm speaking, or, or keystrokes, whatever the case may be. So uh, that, that's a lot of what your brain computation is doing. Now, there, there is an argument that that's actually uh, a healthy thing to do or a helpful thing to do because as you try to compress complex con concepts you're perhaps forced to distill the you know what is it what is most essential in those concepts as opposed to just all the fluff so you, in, in the process of compression you distill things down to what matters the most because you can only say a few things so that is perhaps helpful i think we might <laughs> we'll probably get if, if our data rate increases, the, it's highly probable that it will become far more verbose. Um, just like your computer, you know, when computers had like, my, my first computer had 8K of RAM, you know, so mm -hmm. um, you really thought about every byte. And, um, you know, now you've got computers with many gigabytes of RAM. So, you know, if you want to do an iPhone app that just says, hello world, it's probably, I don't know, several megabytes minimum. <laughs> A bunch of fluff, but nonetheless, you, we still prefer to have the computer with the more memory and more compute. So the long-term aspiration of Neuralink is to uh, improve the AI-human symbiosis um, by increasing the the bandwidth of uh, the communication. Because if even if in the most benign scenario of AI, you have to consider that the AI is simply gonna get bored waiting for you to spit out a few words. I mean, if the AI can communicate at terabits per second and you're communicating at you know, bits per second, uh, it's like talking to a tree. 